Okay, hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Omega Gaming Esports. My name is Ivar, I'm joined by Gordo and Vicro. Say what's up guys. Hello. Hello everybody, how's it going? Going good, going good. We got a best of three series for you today. We got, uh, I feel like I'm going to butcher this a lot, Dreadnought Blaze taking on Omega Gaming Syndicate. Uh, yeah, and we're, we're straight into draft. Um, uh, we see the uh, Kindred... Lilia bands taken away from Fallen, looking like uh, Dreadnought is targeting the jungler. Yeah, I was looking at some of these players' solo queue stats before this game started, and Fallen Artemis has really been playing a lot of those kind of carry junglers, the Kindred, the Lilia. Yeah, and we see the um, Rumble and J4 taken away f by Syndicate. Let's see here. Uh, we Yeah, for everybody in chat who's asking... um. We were going to be using an e-sub if Blood did not make it back in time from work, but he did make it. Right at that 8.03 mark, we had two minutes to spare, so there are no e-sub penalties here. We have the original roster uh, set to go here. Hmm. Vic, that Ash Band indicates Caitlyn first pick? Um, not necessarily. Um, maybe they're trying to bait out a Caitlyn ban as well. Um, also, but, no. Yeah, could Oh, sorry. Also, no, Twisty's a big Jin player, so very could see trying to bait the Caitlyn pick out and go for that kind of Jin counter pick that we've seen a lot lately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Jin does really good into Caitlyn. Um, but yeah, I think Ash is just a really strong ADC in the meta, so it could necessarily mean uh, they want to pick Caitlyn, but they opt for Graves instead, so. Yeah, it's going to be an early pick jungler. for a powerful jungler here. We'll see what they want to take into that. Could definitely steal the Caitlyn over on Omega Gaming's side now. Yeah, so the Olaf picked up. Oh, but Caitlyn, didn't Caitlyn just get nerfed a little bit? This is on yeah. current patch, She did. Right? This is this is the new patch. We've had a couple of patches without pro play now, so who knows what we could see. Yeah, she did get nerfed pretty hard. I believe it was uh, some AD taken off and attack speed per level, if I'm not mistaken. Certainly something but, uh, along those lines. The Ziggs ban is also interesting to point out. If anyone's been watching EU Masters, they're starting to play the Ziggs bottom a lot more over there. Very interested on this Shen pick. Yeah, it could be support. It could be top lane. Definitely synergize as well with the Olaf, but uh, we'll see where they end up putting that. Yeah, um, I know... Usually they try to leave counter pick on red side for blood. He is one of those um, let him have the pick of the litter, litter players and he'll be able to uh, kind of take over the game as long as he has that advantage. But they opt to pick him his top laner. It's looking like unless you said like that could be a support. We could be wrong. Could be Golden Toad is one of those big support kind of engaged tank players. Uh, definitely that more so than any of the enchanters. So it would be certainly in his wheelhouse to be picking up something like this shot. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And Shen is just a really strong pick in general. I think uh, his global pressure is really hard to match. Um, makes him super valuable in the meta right now. Looks like it's going to be a Caitlyn Lulu game coming out for Dreadnought. This is going to be Twisty's opportunity to pick the Jin here. You got to believe that if they don't take it right here, it's going to get banned out in the second wave of bans. Yeah, uh, I think Sivir also came up uh, pretty aggressively in picks, but like you predicted, there is that Jin pick. Yeah, definitely uh, not a counter pick to Caitlyn necessarily, but certainly one of those picks that can at least survive in lane with her, do some trades, and make it out on the other side unscathed. Yeah, as well, knowing Twisty, I know he's a big fan of Jin, so definitely one of his more preferred champions. Oh yeah, he's certainly going to be comfortable on that one. Mm -hmm. and we see the Mordecais are taken away. Um... That is Ridley Prime's main. He has been playing a lot of Mordekaiser this season. It looks like we're just going to be starting to ban out some comfort picks for the solo laners here with the Fizz ban coming out as well. Yeah. Um, so, for... Uh, we call him Teemo. His IGN is Intex. Sorry if I butcher that. Um, he's new to the team. It's a recent pickup uh, for the mid lane in the last two weeks. So, we're not too familiar with his uh, champ pool. Uh, but he does have some niche picks that, like, the, like the Fizz that uh, will be targeted banned. Yeah, uh, the Fizz is a big one I saw. I also noticed the Malphite is a popular pick with Teemo here. Yeah, it, uh, you're, giving so, a, you're giving away the tech so early. Oh, well. <laughs> hopefully they aren't listening in on the stream already, but... We, we have uh, a delay, no worries. 
it's and they can they can see the solo queue same as I can. If I found it out in 15 minutes, they've certainly figured it there out by now. Go. But they are against double AD, so this could definitely be uh, the kind of game where you might want to go for something like that. And just like you predicted, the band comes out. The Zyra hover, the Zyra lock in. So it looks like they're indicating they're going to give mid lane counter pick here. Could be. Could also be the Zyra mid lane. I, I, yeah. I've seen it before. It wouldn't be unheard of. We, a we actually just saw it recently. Um, I forget which team played it, but they played it against a Diana mid. It was a really, okay. really potent uh, pick. Hip Optimus Prime is a Diana player, so it could, could be that preemptive counter pick to try to force him off of one of those picks and onto something he's a little bit less comfortable on. You certainly don't want to be picking melees into a Zyra mid lane. Yeah. Um, Ari's hovered. Okay, I'm calling it right now, dude. The Malzahar pick. The Malzahar pick? I don't know about that one, Chief. Do you, you want to explain why? Malzahar is so potent into Ari. Um, yeah. Provides the wave clearer they need. Control mage style silences are really, really strong against Graves, who, who has to come forward into your team. Ari, who has to come forward into your team. I know uh, Timo in text plays it quite often. I don't know if they're comfortable enough picking it, but uh, it looks like it is the Syndra pick. I was wrong, but uh, for those tuning into the stream, you do know I'm a avid proponent of the Malzahar. So that's why I got a little excited there. <coughs> But yeah, this Cinder pick coming out. For anyone not aware, by the way, this is the new RE. This is with the rework W uh, and the buffs that we were just given this patch to the new rework W. Yeah, I haven't played against it yet. Have either of you? I might have I, played I, against it once, but I, 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 I don't know exactly how much more powerful he's made, it's made her. Uh, I know early opinions were that this is a good buff for her. The movement speed moving off of her passive and onto her W. Uh, and her getting that regen passive back that she used to have. I have played against it. I didn't notice too much of anything, but uh, I believe my mid laner, Marcus, Mr. Princeton, um, said that the healing was more noticeable. So we'll have to look out for that. Yeah, certainly didn't change the play style of the champion too heavily. So For sure. Let's talk about some matchups here. Um, bot lane. Uh, bot lane expert here, Young Vissero. How's this lane supposed um, to go? Well, the Caitlyn definitely is going to be able to do a lot of damage uh, early on to any lane she goes up against, especially when paired with like a Lulu, who's going to just buff her and make her even stronger. Although the Zyra is a good counter pick, uh, I believe, to the Lulu. Um, yeah, comboing those snares is definitely going to be bring out a lot of kill pressure at any point in this lane. Yeah. Um, I think a uh, big focus will be on the bot lane for Syndicate this game. Um, trying to shut down the Caitlyn. Because uh, you definitely don't want to let her get out of control, let her get plates, let her start getting snowball uh, effect going. So uh, I do expect to see that we're going to see a focus bot side for Syndicate. This is also, you got to think it's a bit of a dangerous lane for Blood King up in the top lane, just that Yorick is so oppressive in some of those early laning states when he starts getting those zombies up and going and jumping on you. Uh, Shen generally isn't the kind of champion that's going to be able to trade into that past, like, level one or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I was just going to touch on the the uh, indication that we have... Um this uh, Olaf that can just run down the carries. Uh, does anybody know if his ult uh, ignores Graves' smoke screen? I, I'm not aware, but I thought it I will noticed. ignore the slow at minimum. Yeah. I'm not sure if I do not think it ignores the vision because that's not yeah. crowd control. Yeah, it's it's just the slow. I'm assuming because yeah, I can really I can really see like uh, Olaf running. It doesn't. Okay. So Malcolm mm -hmm. in the chat is telling us it does not. So uh, I could see Olaf running into the back line with a Shen on him, just trying to instantly pop Caitlyn or Lulu or Ari even. Um, Some more anti-Olaf tech that Dreadnought actually has, though, is going to be the Yorick E. If you could put him in that box, I do not believe the ult lets you run out of the box. No, I think he you still would, need to, need to break, break that down. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, I'm going to cut it to a quick, uh, quick break here while we load into the game. Uh, just bear with us, everybody. We will be back within the next couple of minutes, so we can just sync up on our side. Um, and we'll get into game one here. Thank you.
Hello ladies and gentlemen, we are loaded onto the rift, we've got a Mega Gaming Syndicate on the red side, Dreadnought Blaze on the blue side, I am joined by my wonderful casters, my play-by-play -play play -play caster Gordo and color caster Viscero. What do you guys think about this level one? Uh, Standard five point, nothing too crazy really. Yeah, nobody wants to mess around too early here, uh, everybody. Just gonna be laying down those wards. Yeah, especially it, I don't think we touched on it too much, but this is the first game of the best of three of the entire season. Like this is week one, so those pre-tournament jitters are there for some of the players, so they don't want to get too uh, crazy. Uh, I sure. know, especially for a team like Dreadnought, who, as I understand, is new to this league. Yes, I, I know there two of their players. Um, Warwick and I believe Ridley Prime. Don't don't quote me on that. I know Warwick for sure. They were actually on the winning team of Academy League, the league below this, and they were both MVPs in their respective roles. And now they've moved up to the Premier League, which is the the mid plat league. So um, they're definitely uh, household names in LHG, but new to the Premier League. Yeah, definitely exciting game for these guys coming against one of the highest rated teams in the entire league. In yeah. uh, Mega Gaming uh, Syndicate here. Yeah, no, for sure. I'm, I'm kind of interested about these pats. Both both junglers opt to not start where their bot lane is. Um, cool, cool. There, there was some uh, serious trash talk going on between the junglers earlier today, so they've got a lot to prove. For sure here. Olaf especially starting off on the top side. Uh, probably going to slow his clear down a little bit, just without having the blue buff to spam those axes. But, uh... Yeah, but, but Olaf likes to get low in the jungle, right? Oh, for sure. That, uh... That passive comes in where he's able to, you know, get the lifesteal and attack speed buffs for all the health that he's missing. We were talking in Champion Select about the Shen versus York matchup in the top lane, and we can see that Blood King's actually got the way of pushing into him here, so that's probably where he wants it to be at this point early on. So he could try to farm up a little bit against that Yorick before he starts getting zoned out. There's the double snare we talked about in the bot lane. Lots of damage coming out of Pixie Storm. Yeah. Uh, really uh, kind of setting the pace for the lane there in the bot lane. Another one of those snares uh, land from, lands from Toad, and that could be some summoners blown. Caitlyn's such an oppressive laner, but with how squishy both of these guys are and the double snares coming out of Omega Gaming's bot lane, they are always going to be in danger of getting turned around on. We see the pings coming out. Okay, thanks so much, Jake, for the three-month Twitch Prime subscription. I appreciate you, brother. Appreciate everything you do for us. You can see Warwick is actually pushing up into Artemis' jungle here, just trying to find out where he is before he gets started on that Scuttler. Also, Blood King coming in, trading on Ridley Prime a little bit here. He's going to have to back off, but the zombies are actually beating on him here, and he can't get out of the wall. Going to be a favorable trade for the Yorick. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of exactly what I expect from Blood King, even in a matchup where all you expect to send to really do is survive it. He's still going aggressive, trying to make the trades happen. And he does have quite the CS lead early with the waves that are pretty even state, so it seems to be working out for him. Yeah, like you mentioned, the significant CS lead going in the top lane here. And it looks like both... No, not both. It looks like actually um, Inte in the mid lane was able to get a... I know I use this term lightly, but I believe it was a cheater recall off. Because uh, he does have that D-ring by, um, we see some fighting oh, on top lane. Here we lane. go, we got a fight going on top lane. We're going to have the Olaf coming in, dealing lots of damage onto Ridley Prime, but he's locked in the wall yet again. But First Blood gets picked up in the mid lane by Intexi onto that Ari. Yeah, that was that, that cheater recall allowed him to refill his health and mana pool, come back with three corrupting stacks and that Doran's ring. And you know, just, you saw him, he just ran past the minions and just straight auto attack trade against a monolith uh, Ari and was able to pick up that kill. Yeah, he's got Ignite, he's got Electrocute, he's aggressively ruined and aggressively summoner spelled to be able to be able to take those aggressive trades on to Hip Optimus Prime and comes out with a solo kill for it. And, uh, looks like the bot lane has been doing a good job for Syndicate here. It's frozen right in front of their tower, right where they want it to be. 
uh, Twisty's farming up safely, uh, not allowing Caitlyn to get to that tower, and and do what she does best and f brute forcing these towers down. Yeah, all five, all five plates down. A minor CS lead, as you can see, that the red wave is already gone and the blue wave is crashing in. So, definitely being well navigated in this bot lane against one of the stronger bot laners in the meta in that Caitlyn, even with the nerfs. Hmm. Well, that's a recall interrupt onto the Lulu, taking a lot of damage here. She is alone. The Caitlyn's already completed her recall, so Pixie going to have to retreat under that turret and have her recalls desynced from the Caitlyn. Yeah, really good heads-up play from Toad there to catch him lazily basing there. Just stopping the recalls is really crucial, actually. Yeah. Speaking of cheater recalls here, Ridley Prime going to be able to get off a of back as he crashes this wave into turret. Probably not going to have to use that teleport be able to just walk back into lane. It looks like Warwick is also uh, sneaking the dragon here. He's probably going to be able to get this for free as Fallen Artemis just base. Yeah, they Omega Gaming does not seem to know that this is going on. They've got a pink ward in the pit. They've got no wards in the river. They lost the Scuttler earlier due to that uh, altercation with Warwick and Fallen Artemis. Uh, so they're going to be rewarded with a free Infernal Drake. Yeah, and they just sneaked that away and Pretty pretty good Drake here, uh, especially for the first one, for yep. for the damage dealers of uh, Dreadnought here. But I want to point out that we do see a Cloud Drake coming up. Another stun on a Hip Optimus Prime. That's an Electrocute proc. Syndra does have the ultimate up. He can flash ultimate here, and that's going to be a Ooh. second solo kill for the Syndra, starting to snowball out of control. And, and this is what you hate to see in the mid lane. Uh, a uh, lane bully like Syndra, able to do whatever she wants in lane, get those two kills, and now pretty much with this summoner spell, not the summoner spell, this uh, keystone that uh, Intex has here, the electrocute, uh, every time he hits that uh, scout of the week now in lane, it's pretty much going to be uh, half to three quarters of uh, Hip Hippotamus Prime's uh, HP bar. Yeah, absolutely. Certainly a lot of threat coming out of that mid lane now, and it does not appear like it's going to be getting any better here. you got to wonder at what point Hip Optimus Prime might want to start uh, itemizing into something like a Mercury's Treads. But once again, Blood King getting caught in the wall. If you get caught in there against Yorick, he's going to be wailing on you for quite a while. Warwick just clearing out a ward here, looking to set up for his blue buff. But once again, Hippopotamus Prime has caught Intexi in the river, but he's so behind, you have to worry for him. Yeah, uh, and it looks like a little bit of a skirmish going on for this uh, blue side. Uh, sure, blue it is 3v2 at the moment because Blood King hasn't been able to come down. So you think that Dreadnought Blaze is going to be able to sustain through this. Yeah, and uh, Snare does land in the bot lane. Another snare, double snare into the Zyra ultimate, going to be CC'd for so long, but putting out so much damage on that Caitlyn actually manages to force Golden Toad back. And once again, the Ari is just taking so much damage. Scuffed Jin ult a little bit there. Doesn't seem like it's going to actually be able to get anything done. Alcove season 10 difference, allowing Dreadnought Blaze to get out of there. Yeah. Uh, so Twisty here, we like to call him Len. Um, he's really proficient on this Jin. Uh, I don't think he's played it too much recently since... Um, the meta kind of shifted away from Jen, but recently it's been coming back. But it's funny you mentioned the season 10 thing because I'm sure he played this a lot in the previous seasons before the alcove was a thing. For sure. And once again, slow down onto the Lulu. They're just going to be chasing him back. They're certainly being able to go tit for tat here, both being able to put out a lot of damage onto each other's supports. Yeah, and we see the CS lead in the mid lane growing really fast. Yeah. And Texi is really bullying Hip Hop, uh, Hip Optimus Prime right now, and uh, it, there's really not much that uh, Dreadnought Blaze can do about it. They don't really have a jungler that can. Oh, another oh. stun onto the Ari. It might be another solo kill here. He's got the ignite taking down. Yeah. He's going to be dead. Yeah, and as I say, he gets another solo kill. Is really, it's getting really uh, to the point where it's getting really worrisome for Dreadnought. There's, they got to shut down the Syndra somehow, but. They just don't have the jungle pressure to do so. They don't, and it's it's one of those things where Graves is not a tanky jungler inherently, and those true grit stacks from your E are not going to be giving you magic resist. So he could just get blown up by the Cinder just as easily. He has to be yeah. just as concerned. Yeah, They're very fortunate to have the Lulu to be able to have that Lulu ult later in the game 
for the uh, target that's being... Um, it's going to be the Rift Herald here getting first turret, by yeah. the way. First turret going over to Syndicate at 10 yeah. minutes. Yeah, Omega intelligently getting through the first four pl or first three plates before they place the Herald, make sure that the tankiest plates get cleared out by that true damage. Meanwhile, as we check in on the other lanes, it really really is just mostly mid lane making a difference here, although there's a lot of damage coming out of Ridley Prime onto Blood King here. He already used the E. He might be forced to flash. He gets slowed again by the E. He's getting queued again. He does use the flash, but Warwick has flash as well. He's going to be looking for the solo kill, but he cannot get it. He's forced back. Yeah, very Oof, close. Really close. Looks like the Titanic Hydro Rush for Blood King, actually. Um, so Blood King and... Fallen Artemis, both pseudo bruiser builds, uh, no dedicated tank thus, uh, thus far. Well, the Titanic Hydra first into tank is pretty standard Shen builds these days. It's going to be particularly useful against the Warwick because it's going to let him use that Titanic Hydra off uh, active to instantly clear through the zombies, hopefully, and prevent those ghouls rather from sticking on him and dealing damage for too long. Hell yeah, yeah. Oh, the flash the snare misses, but the follow-up snare from Jin does not. This is going to be a lot of damage coming out. The Jin ultimate is pounding down onto Lulu, but it does not seem like it's going to be enough. Brownie actually trades back onto the Zyra. And now we got another fight in top lane. Blood King going in onto Ridley Prime now that he's got the itemization advantage. But Warwick, Yorick pops the ultimate, and now we got another fight going on in bot lane. Ari is instantly blowed up again. They're still fighting in top, but we're not focusing on that right now because Warwick is just trying to escape, but not going to quite be able to do so. Actually is going to be able to do so. They're forced back. It's going to be one kill for none. And Blood King is once again forced back. He's running away. Might get solo killed here again, but he looks like he manages the escape. Yeah, uh... That was the late heal coming out from Len. He could have saved um, Toad's life there, but he healed right after that uh, last auto attack came out from Caitlyn. Unfortunate there. Scrap's going down all over the map. It's really intense gameplay right here. And like I said, the bot lane focus is where it seems to be at. Now that the mid lane has gotten the lead for herself, she's now rotating around the map, trying to get things happening in the bot lane, but doesn't quite work out for them. For sure. Omega has such a big early lead on this Syndra that you'd think they want to pressure it a little bit more. Oh, Blood King actually getting forced out here, but he's going to be the victim of a roam from Intexi, doing a lot of damage, slowing him down. Still has not the ultimate available, but has Flash and Ignite. They're going to be chasing down onto him. Looks like Ridley's probably going to be able to escape here. Unless he goes for something a little cheeky. Yeah, he's just going to walk that out. Um... Dragon, it looks like it is the Ocean Soul, so that's actually really good for both teams, now that I think about it. Uh, almost a win condition for both teams. Yeah, absolutely, both teams are going to be wanting that soul, both uh, tied at one dragon apiece early on, so whoever does end up with the soul is going to have three drakes of the same type, uh, which they give multiplicative benefits. It's definitely better to have three of one than two different kinds and then two of the same. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, the Ocean Drake will definitely help out uh, this Olaf a lot. Um, it helps out, the like, really everyone a lot, but this Olaf will definitely feel a lot of benefit from it. Oh, oh once, now it looks like the jungler's getting caught out. Warwick Ooh. almost goes down, but just barely manages to survive. Intexi getting a little overconfident there, not quite able to finish off the kill with the last auto he would need. Yeah, just a fade away. Thought he had enough damage, but... Yeah, like you said, lives on just a slip. Would have killed him with an auto attack. He has the ignite up. He had a lot of options there, but just yeah. can't quite get it done. Props to Warwick, though, for calculating that and managing to get out. For sure. See, plates are now gone, so the Caitlyn, pretty ineffective so far. Or, not ineffective, but... Syndicate have done a decent job of canceling out her effectiveness. If Caitlyn's not really getting plates, she's not really doing as best as she could. All right, here you go. Here's that opportunity that Titanic Hydra active is used to try to clear away those ghouls. Not going to be too much trading from either side. Oh, but now Blood King's going in. He's going to be trying to deal damage onto this Warwick. He gets the empowered autos off, but that's about all the damage he has. Now he's locked in there with the ghouls. Ridley's just going to be farming it out on this other side. Knows that Chen can't get to him. 
Yeah, uh, meanwhile, uh, Olaf's starting up the Rift Herald here. Probably going to be able to sneak that one away while Graves is busy bot side. Yeah, it's going to go down. Artemis is going to pick that up. Maybe look to come and drop it top here. Maybe look for a dive onto Ridley Prime. Yeah, for sure. Possible. He's already chunked to about half HP. So. He's doing the Gromp, and they found Graves here in the bot lane. Golden Toad is going to be in trouble. He has to get out of here and blow the ultimate to escape. But more importantly, that does show Omega that uh, the Graves is not top lane. So once again, they're opened up for this dive. They got the wave crashing in. Yeah, and uh, Shen ultimate here is comes the, It's the taunt. Blood King is tanking up the turret right away, and that's just going to be an easy kill. Yeah. He's easy dive. Really well juggled there. Uh, pretty clean. And Shen ultimate was actually popped there on, on the Zyra bot lane, but Yorick actually cancelled it, so... Oh, kind of okay. feeling his own fate. Yeah, absolutely, actually. I didn't even notice that, but... Probably wouldn't have been able to pull off that dive if he had finished the teleport. Huge damage coming out onto Caitlyn, flowing out the Lulu ultimate. Will she be able to escape? It seems like she will be, but... Big, strong plays coming out of this Jin Zyra duo. As we said, it looks like they're, it's going to be the Syndra coming in for a dive. They have nowhere to go. They're pinched in from both sides. Huge damage onto the Lulu, instantly blown up. Brownie looking to trade back, but not going to be able to do enough damage. Warwick is here, trying to see if he can get a big shutdown of the Syndra. That's a huge amount of gold going into him. And it's definitely one of the trade backs that Dreadnought Blaze needs if they want to stay competitive in this game. Yeah, really nice for the Graves to pick that up there. He's a big carry on this team, so he, he's definitely going to need all that gold. Yeah, arguably the biggest scaling advantage that Dreadnought has is going to be this Graves over this uh, Olaf. You know, the Jin, he's limited by his ammo, but he is still long range and still does have that big movement speed and those big crits coming out in the late game. But uh, the, the scaling difference is definitely going to be made up by Warwick tier. Mm -hmm, for sure. The one thing I do like about Syndicate's comp that we haven't really uh, talked about yet is that... Jin is a ADC that does really well at setting up his team. So um, the fact that they paired Jin with a, an aggressive jungler like Olaf, uh, it's really good uh, drafting for me um, out of the side of Syndicate. Um, Olaf gets to charge in and just have the safety of uh, Jin to back him up. Yeah, Olaf definitely one of those champions that thrives when his teammates have CC, and everybody but Olaf has some hard CC in this team comp. But it looks like Warwick is trying to get this dragon here, but they see it going on. Artemis has his Olaf E, and Warwick is forced entirely out of the pit while Brownie goes down. This is going to be an easy dragon for Omega Gaming. Yep, another easy drag and another easy kill for uh, Toad there on the Zyra. Yeah, this game is starting to snowball out of control for Dreadnought Blaze. Dreadnought Blaze have got to make something happen pretty soon here or they're going to be down they're already down by one drake it's going to be two drakes once the next one's up if they can't manage to pull something back uh they're down in turrets and they're just getting pressured all over the map as this syndra is just making a huge difference as she roams around the map yeah and uh i'm just wondering how are dreadnought going to actually make a comeback if they want to do so they have a lot of tools uh, to make picks and to do things with their comp, but they're just not using it as effectively as they should be. They certainly do. There's squishy members all over the bot side of this map for Omega, so there's definitely players that can be picked off if you can find them out of position, but finding them out of position is going to be the hard part, especially as you're already down in turrets, you've lost all your outer turrets, they're going to start collapsing around your jungle, and it's going to get more and more dangerous for people like Warwick and Pixie to go out and try to get those wards down. Yep, for sure. Not really a true tank on the side of Dreadnought either, as we were mentioning before. Uh, the Shen's definitely going to be building tank at, at some point. He's already got the Bami Cinder in his inventory, so... Olaf as well, just going to be naturally tanky with the items he builds. He's going to be getting up a lot of health. He's going to be healing up a lot with that W. Fallen Artemis giving over the red buff to Twisty. And contesting the blue buff at the same time, Warwick is going to be able to pick that up, but this is just the pressure I was talking about earlier. It's the Omega has complete control over the river and is starting to push that control into the fringes of Dreadnought's jungle. They just are really struggling to manage to push out and leave. Yep, definitely. Um, it, it becomes harder and harder to, like you say, get control, um, especially now that all the outer towers are down for the side of Dreadnought. Um, the towers really offer them a lot of protection. Without that protection, their their lines of uh their lines of battle that they can draw 
become less and less and further and further back into their own base. For sure. And you could look at Intexi and Golden Toad just starting to fight for vision over by that blue buff side on the blue team side. And they're looking to set up for Baron here. They're trying to get down all the vision they can. They have the Shen with ultimate in bot lane. Uh, and if they start this up, it's going to force Dreadnought to come and walk into them. And just like that, they're going to be blowing up onto the Lulu. Tons of damage here. She goes down with her ultimate still up. Yep, like you said, ultimate not even able to be used. Heal was used, exhaust was used, but no, not enough to keep herself alive. Yeah, too much damage, too fast coming out of that Syndra. She's now at six kills. She's got one item done and an Oblivion Orb additionally. She's got five stacks onto her ring if she decides she wants to upgrade that into a Magize. Just an incredibly dangerous champion for the rest of the mid game. If she can, she can pretty much one shot anybody on Dreadnought's team at this point. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, once these items start to get completed, she's just going to get more and more strong. Uh, as well, the items coming through from uh, Fallen Artemis here. He's got the Black Cleaver completed. Tabby's finished as well. And Twisty's not doing too bad for himself. Already has an IE and a uh, Rapid Fire Cannon. Yeah, two items to one on the Jin versus Caitlyn matchup is a huge deal. Those four assists and that 30 CS lead really making up the difference. Now we look like we got an engage coming out of Blood King. Once again, going to be locked in there. But Ridley is already lower on HP and doesn't even seem like he can take the trade anymore. It seems like that Yorick advantage is kind of worn out its welcome as they start to each get an item completed. Yeah. Um, you, you do expect Yorick to be a menace in the side lane at some point, but so far it seems like the Shen has been matching him pretty well. Uh, I'm not too sure if maybe things get later into the game, the Yorick will be unmatchable, but... As of right now, he's not really not really bringing uh, too much of an advantage to his team. Yeah. Syndra has completed a recall, gone back on that Morel and Amicon. Uh, so just even further ahead now than she was. Uh, also, interestingly, Hippoptimus Prime seems to be going for the double Lost Chapter item build on Ari. I don't know if that's what you're supposed to do, but certainly an interesting option. Yeah, definitely interesting. Uh, I don't even believe he should have gone for the Ludens now that you bring it up. Um, just considering that his rune choice was Glacial Augment. Yeah, it feels like Super Soaker would be the way to go here. <laughs> yes, uh, definitely GLP would be the item you want when you're going Glacial Augment, but... <sighs> I mean, you can go both, and that may yeah. very well be what he's doing. I don't think we expected Archangels at 23 minutes, but... Yeah, for sure not. Certainly an interesting itemization choice, but actually Dreadnought's going to be starting up this Baron here. I'm not sure that Omega Gaming knows that it's going on. They're slowly creeping into that area, but they aren't acting with the kind of urgency that you'd expect from a 3k Baron. There's no jungler on this side because they were doing the Baron. That's going to be a Baron over to Dreadnought Blaze, but there's going to be a team fight breaking out here right away. And one immediately blown up by, uh, by the Syndra. Lulu immediately taken out as well, and Dreadnought are just going to have to try to escape, get as many of those Baron buffs up as they can. Yeah, and Twisty's got blood in his eyes here. He sees the graves. He's going for it. Yeah, it looks like they're going to be able to pick up the graves, and he's taken down. Big team fight win over by Omega Gaming, even though the Baron is lost. The Baron is lost, but meanwhile, like you said, Fallen Artemis did pick up that drag, so now they're on Soul Point, which is pretty big for them. Um, it's just basically going to be about how much uh, Dreadnought can stall this game out with this Baron buff. Yeah, they've got it on, I believe, they've got it on Caitlyn and Ari still, so hopefully those two champions are going to be enough. The charm miss on to Syndra certainly hurts. Yeah, that definitely could have been big if they got another uh, pickup down there. Uh, shutdowns but... are growing for the side of Syndicate now with 350 on the Jin and 300 on the Zyra, so... Yeah, definitely a great way to get back in the game is if they could start picking up some of these big shutdowns. Uh, but it looks like this game is really going to come down to, especially with the Baron down, onto this Ocean Soul. They're going to be fighting for it here in just a couple of minutes, and it seems like if Omega is able to finish off that Ocean Soul and get it for themselves, that's just got to be GG. That's a solid win condition mm -hmm. right there. Yeah, definitely. Um, we'll, we'll have to see. Um, there is some items that could be completed by the time the next drag comes up for the side of Dreadnought Blaze, but 
I don't know if it'll be enough for them to be able to fight and contest for this next drag. But you have to imagine they do go for it. Yeah, they gotta get whatever farm they can, they gotta recall and buy the items that they can. Just because this is going to be their last stand. They can't afford to give this up. For sure. While well, everybody just going, setting up. Omega coming out of their base. Freshly bought items. Gonna try to put down some of the early wards for the dragon spawns. Make sure that they can maintain control over that area. Not give Dreadnought any opportunity to come in and contest. Well, an artist might be looking for a play on Ridley Prime here, but Yorick's aware of it. He walls off the uh, the Olaf. Incredibly effective way to prevent Olaf from getting onto you. But now Syndra's going in on Ari. Hippoptimus Prime taken very low, but not quite down. Going to have to use the ultimate, trade ultimates for mid laners there. And with the Baron buff, Dreadnought Blaze is actually going to be able to come up, take mid priority, and push down the mid outer turret. It's a good step for them if they want to have dragon control here. Yeah, definitely a good uh, good way to get. Fallen Artemis just coming in onto Warwick here, popping the ultimate, running straight up into three people, flashing into them with the Shen ultimate. Tons of damage here onto the Lulu, who's managing to escape, and it looks like it's not going to be quite enough. Dreadnought Blaze forced back, but not defeated in any significant way. Yeah, nice disengage there from Dreadnought. That was really looking very scary for them with the Shen ulti coming out on top of the Olaf. Yeah, they actually do have so many disengage tools on this team, actually. Between the Lulu ultimate Blood King coming in with the aggressive teleport, gonna have to immediately taunt away. Doesn't look like anything's gonna happen here, though. But yeah, they have so many disengage tools between the Warwick E, the Lulu ultimate, and once again, they're fighting here. They Somebody's gonna die here. These two top laners are not going to stop fighting each other until one goes down. Yep. Top lane way is just bonk bonk and hit each other in the face, you know? Yeah. Shen kills the Maiden. That's almost a champion. Yep. Small victories. We'll take them. We do. That does mean probably uh, no no Maiden for this dragon fight, assuming that it's going to be coming up pretty soon. It's going to be the Scuttler going over to Omega Gaming. Yeah. 40 seconds on the dragon spawning. No, Omega Gaming Syndicate up, taking full control of the river, and now the enemy red jungle already. Yeah, this is the exact kind of setup you want as Omega Gaming Syndicate, and the exact kind you don't want to see if you're Dreadnought Blaze. It's going to be so dangerous for them to step into this red jungle, and that's the only pathway they have to get to the, bar uh, to the dragon, rather. Just in text, he's able to just lay down these balls and push them away towards the other team, prevent them from coming in. Yep. And here they go. They're going to try to make their move here. They're going to try to come in through mid lane. Uh, but Omega Gaming Syndicate, they smell it. They know that they're coming here. They're setting up in the long brush by the river. Just trying yep. to get any kind of vision here by Warwick. Just coming in, scanning, clearing wards, hoping against all hopes that he can find a way in here to steal this dragon, which is already being started up. This is going to be their one chance. Hippoptimus Prime goes in for vision on his own. Ari ultimates away. He's going to be able to Ari ultimate out. Gets Syndra ulted, but manages to survive. And here Ooh. we go. Blue team manages to steal it. This is not going to be the dragon soul, but it is going to be the fight. Ridley Prime in there, taking tons of damage. Going to be blown up instantly. It is a one for zero. Make that a two for zero. Actually, still a one for zero. Hippoptimus Prime manages to flash away, get Lulu ulted, and survive the Syndra damage. So it's going to be one kill over to Omega Gaming Syndicate, and likely the Baron as they come to set up here but it is most importantly not going to be the soul as warwick in his first game in this league able to come and get an impressive steal to keep his team in the game yep they're still alive here um baron is now on the table though and warwick is in the vicinity but I mean, warwick is here if he wants to go for a second miracle steal in a row he's he can be my guest but it seems like this baron is probably going to go down to mega gaming syndicate they could try to win the game off it here second baron is more powerful than first baron but at least there's no soul it's not permanent mm -hmm. the one thing i will say is that um buying more time is I, I'm not sure if it even helps um, uh, Dreadnought Blaze in this situation uh, that much. I, I, I'm not sure if they outscale this game. Just with the fact that you have a Caitlyn that's three levels down, 
you have a Ari that's even in levels, but just not making anything happen really. She's got the double lost chapter items completed now, but it, it's just not looking good still. For... She's certainly never gonna hurt for mana again, but it's zero and four here. Just not have the kind of impact they wanted out of this pick. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm just hoping against hope that, you know, maybe the Yorick will win the split push eventually and they can have some kind of win condition out of that, but it's yeah. not looking good. Mega just making sure they get all their side lanes cleared so they can go in for some kind of Baron push. Two people coming on to Blood King here. Omega is aware of this and just taking time to push through mid lane with their Baron buff. And a big engage coming in onto Ridley Prime. He's just going to get blown up once again right at the beginning of the fight. Now it is a 5v3 in the base. Pixie broken down as well. And now it is just going to be open season on the base for Omega Gaming Syndicate. As they push in, they're going to take this mid inhibitor and they're going to look to end the game here. Yep, this could be the game right here. Very much could be. They've got the recalls in, but it is a 5v3 for the Nexus turrets. One Nexus turret goes down. Big charm on the Fallen Artemis, who's getting healed up, but it's not going to be enough. He goes down. Now it is a 4v3. Golden Toad also going to be caught out. It is now a 3v3. It might not be the end of the game here, but Warwick taking a lot of damage. They have Baron minions knocking out of their Nexus. They have to get out of the base and start defending this, but it's not going to happen. Omega Gaming Syndicate going to take game one of this series. Yeah, GG. Very close at the end there. Might have been possible, but Omega Gaming Syndicate just decide, hey guys, let's stop fooling around, just focus the Nexus. And, yeah, they come away with the win. All right. Definitely going to be some things to think about going into game two here for Dreadnought Blaze. Need to see they're going to be changing up their strategies a little bit, maybe go for a little bit more favorable of a mid lane matchup. So that's certainly where this game was turned. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was just going to. Go I was going to say, looking at the damage charts here, uh, Cinder really took over the game. For sure. Yeah, she was a menace to deal with for sure. Yeah, absolutely, dealing almost double the damage of any champion on her team, other than Jin. Uh, yeah, certainly. If we're giving out MVPs for these for this series, MVP of game one definitely going to be in taxi on the Syndra. Yep. And um, looks like we're loading. Uh, I'm getting an invite for the next lobby, so we'll be back shortly, guys. Uh, just bear with us, and uh, we'll get into the second pro draft. Uh, not pro draft. Uh, second draft.